Way back in the 80s as a child, I used to watch a show called The Adventures of Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids. The show is currently one of the longest running cartoon shows in history and is famous for teaching young children life lessons. I loved the show and watched it every day. However, by the age of 13, I stopped watching the show. I am now a grown up and live in an apartment in New York. One day when I was browsing through the internet, I found a site that was selling episodes of Fat Elber and the Cosby Kids. I scrolled through and saw they had the whole collection. Naturally, like most people my age, I bought the collection to relieve my childhood. I received an entire DVD collection of, in the mail of all the seasons. Oddly enough, there was one episode that I received was on a VHS. I did some research on the internet and what I got was a few posts discussing about an episode of Fat Albert that only aired for a few minutes. According to the fans, the episode was just beginning at the startup, but right as the theme song began to play, the show cut to stack and an announcement was made on CBS, the channel that Fat Albert originally aired, that tonight's episode of Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids was cancelled and another episode would play. Upon realizing that I become not only excited because now I have the complete collection of my favorite shows that I loved as a kid, but I also had some rare unreleased episode. I decided to play the episode titled Smiling First. I got out my old VHS player and plugged it into the TV and put the VHS in. I was greeted with a black screen that just said in bold red letters, Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids Smiling. From then, it cut to a picture of a mouth smiling with the odd Japanese text above it. There was a rip on the screen that I had covered, at least free of the symbols. Thankfully, I texted my friend who spoke Japanese, and he was able to tell me. Using the parts of the symbols that weren't cut off, what they could translate to is translate to out to smiling is the mask of suffering. An odd way to start and unnerve for me for some reason. Now, before I mention the theme, I need to take a mention that the intro was cut out only by the scenes I have mentioned were in it. The main theme begins to play, except something was wrong. The song was lower and slowed down making the sound depressing and obnoxious. Even weirder, some of the scenes where Bill Cosby was supposed to be on stage dancing around in the feed during the theme, he wasn't there. It was just an empty background. It then cuts to the scene where Fat Albert's friends were supposed to be carrying him, but instead it was just a picture of Fat Albert lying on the ground and the footprints leading off the screen in the direction that they were carrying Albert. But what really stood out to me was there was scratch marks leaning in the opposite direction of the footprints. From what I could gather, I believed that the boys saw something and ran away. However, one of the boys wasn't able to get away fast enough and it grabbed him and dragged him away. The intro then cuts to the junkyard and it was abandoned and emptied. It showed the instruments that the Cosby kids used for music. The instruments were lying on the ground, mangled and broken. I could have sworn that the end of the one of the instruments I saw had a bit of blood, as if someone used it as a weapon and hit someone. The intro finally ended and I was quite shocked at some of the imagery, but I had continued watching the episode. The episode shows the Cosby Kids and Albert playing in the junkyard. Rudy begins talking about how he heard about a new girl near moving into a home nearby them. Rudy went on to say, I've heard some kids who have spoken to her and tell me that she's really weird. We shouldn't hang out with her. Albert then replied, Just because she, she's different doesn't mean we shouldn't hang out with her. Before Albert and Rudy could finish their conversation, the school bell rang, and Albert and the gang then hurried inside the school. When they arrived, then ran into a new girl. The gang introduced themselves and said hello. The girl smiled in a depressed tone, sad. Hello, I'm Daisy. Albert then asked her if she wanted to walk in the class with them. Daisy just said, Okay, I guess so. As they walked, Albert asked what got her so down, and Daisy replied, I just feel sad. I never had any friends. I've always been secluded and everything has just been a meaningless feel to it. Albert replied saying, But it's not, Daisy. Everything you do is a meeting, and life is what you make of it. When you finally realize it, you will smile and be glad I told you. Daisy then said, Okay then. After school, Daisy and Albert were walking down and then she encountered Rudy lighting a joint with a special lighter and that he carries around. Albert becomes furious and warns Rudy that drugs can do harm to him and make him go insane. 
However, Rudy brushes off what Albert said and continued. The next day, Rudy got into trouble after having an outburst and attacking a fellow classmate, beating him to near consciousness. Events like this continued over the course of the next three days, until Albert couldn't take it anymore. He decided to go tell the school faculty that he was doing drugs and if he could get Rudy any help. However, the school was already over and Albert decided to wait till tomorrow to tell the school faculty. However, as Albert was walking to his school, a scream bellowed from Rudy's house. Albert rushed to the door and tried to open it, but it was locked. Albert quickly went home and called the police. After a few moments, Officer Gomez and other policemen arrived at the house. They only went inside just to find Rudy's parents, sitting at the dinner table dead, with their heads flying against the table. Rudy is nowhere to be found, and a police officer did an investigation of the bodies and concluded that they were poisoned. Eventually, Daisy arrived and she was in terror when she saw the site. The police began to look around the house and Albert, and Daisy decided to help, found a ventilation shaft ripped open, and assumed whoever kidnapped it, Rudy escaped through the ventilation shaft. Around 10 p.m., two days after Rudy's disappearance, Albert sees outside a window in the dark, Rudy standing in the corner and glaring at him. Albert ran out to see him, but Rudy ran off. The following day, Daisy was nowhere to be found, and like after three days of absence, the police put out a search. Some of the neighbors stated that they witnessed what looked like a kidnapping of the night of Daisy's disappearance. The witness claimed that they looked like Rudy with a sadistic smile on his face, carrying something with a large sack away from, from Daisy's home. Then Albert thought to himself, It's those drugs! They're messing with Rudy's mind and making him do all those terrible things. He wasn't kidnapped. He killed his parents, climbed out of the ventilation shaft. Then the show caught to a live-action Bill Cosby murmuring to himself, they, It will not get my smile. It will not get my smile. It will not get my smile. Bill eventually become more aggressive and began yelling and pacing around the room like a madman. It then cuts back to the cartoon and shows off Officer Gomez driving a car. His tires eventually burst from rolling across glass shards what looked like smashed bottles. Officer Gomez's car crashed into a wall. In the front at the end, he crawled out and reveals that he had twisted his leg and is immobile. Rudy then appears out from nearby alley and starts beating Officer Gomez until he was unconscious, then drags his body into an alleyway. Live action Bill Cosby then appeared on screen and beating himself near death with a baseball bat, repeating, It will not have my smile, over and over and over. His face was swollen and he looked like he was losing insane amounts of blood. One of the stagehands eventually came out to help him, but he struck down with the baseball bat, and then Bill Cosby continued to beat himself with the baseball bat until he was dead. It then cut back to the cartoon and showed Albert smiling and reading the newspaper. He sees the newspaper that had Officer Gomez disappear that night, and his patrol car was found two blocks down from where Albert lived. Albert decided to go out and investigate. He went to the spot where Officer Gomez's car was found. He found it for the entire area after searching for clues. Albert eventually found what he was looking for. Barely caught his eye and he saw an alleyway nearby, glistening in the very thin stench of light. Just barely reached the alley, what looked like a few drops of blood. He went over to the alley and found several drops of blood leading further into the alley. What Albert found at the end of the alley was shocking. It was a severed hand. A hand with several puncture wounds, as if a syringe had been stuck to it and blood had been drained from it, almost as if a vampire had bit it several times. Albert then tried to open the door that was right behind the severed hand, but it was blocked off by some object. Albert then called the police, and the police arrived and took the hand as evidence and did an investigation of the alley. They found nothing else but drops of blood in the hand. The hand was eventually confirmed to be Officer Gomez's hand. Albert was still in shock from that day and suspected that Rudy was behind it. Albert got in the remaining game together and decided they should look for Rudy to confront him. They searched and searched but found nothing. After a few hours of searching, Russell got bored and wandered off. The rest of the game noticed this and went looking for him. They eventually found Russell standing in the alleyway staring at Rudy. Rudy grabbed Russell and ran off with him. He had a huge grin on his face. They followed Rudy without noticing Rudy lead them to a warehouse. Albert decided to see if the gang should stay out there and wait. 
The rest of the gang thought he was crazy, but Albert wanted to see if he could talk to some sense into Rudy. Albert entered the house and saw Rudy standing across, across from Rudy, facing the, the opposite direction. Standing in the middle of the, of the length between Albert and Rudy was Russell standing there. Albert yelled, Russell, get over here before Rudy hurts you. Rudy then turns around and then pointed at the desk lamp towards Russell. The light revealed that it was simply a dummy. Albert had been fooled. Albert then yelled, Rudy, don't you see what you're doing? You're hurting people. You need to turn yourself in. Rudy did not respond, but instead turned around. His eyes were dark in holes and he had just had a big smile on his face. Rudy just stood there aside to reveal the body right behind him. The body was hanging upside down from the ceiling and its face skinned only showing an underlayer of muscle and tissue. The body was also wearing Rudy's clothes. This confused Albert as the Rudy had done all those things was also wearing the same clothes. However, he didn't have to wait long before the answer was revealed. Dark-eyed Rudy grabbed his face and pulled off the, like a mask, revealing it to be Daisy behind it all. Albert stood there dumbfounded in terror of what he saw. Suddenly, it all made sense. It wasn't Rudy that was doing this. It was Daisy running around with similar clothes, wearing his face as a mask. Albert then said, Why are you doing this, Daisy? Daisy replied, Because, Albert, I could never smile. But now I can through the faces of other people. Albert then replied, But what about Officer Gomez's hand in the alleyway? It looked like it had several puncture wounds. Daisy then said, Why don't I show you? She shined the desk lamp on the another hanging body. This one was wearing a police officer uniform and it was also skinned. It was no doubt that it was Officer Gomez's body, not only because it had a police officer outfit on, but it was also missing a hand. She then pulled his own police shirt, revealing a stomach that revealed that his entire body was covered in puncture wounds from what looked like needles. Daisy said, I eventually began to start feel sad again, although I was wearing a smile, so I decided that I would drain the blood from the stomach acid from the people I connect collected, and what to do with the blood and stomach acid is I take it to a friend that I know. He makes it into a smokable drug. The drug makes me happy but I'm not able to smile from it, so if I wear the smile and use the drugs to make me feel happy, I will have a smile if I keep them both on. Albert then replied sharply, But why did you cut off Officer Gomez's hand in the first place? Daisy replied in a manical manner, He tried to grab me by the throat with his hand, so I cut it off. I didn't want to waste the blood in the hand, so I took a syringe in a jar. And I added the blood drained from his hand to the jar. Daisy then laughed and said, However, that's not important. What is the fact is you're the happiest person I know, and thus I need your smile. Daisy then pulled out a large knife covered in blood. The blood glistened in the light from the moon, showing that the crack fell off the ceiling. This sight made Albert sick. Albert then ran for the door, but Daisy got to it before him and locked it and swallowed the key. Albert then said, No, you don't, won't have my smile, and you will never take anyone else's smile. Albert then ran off with some old gasoline cans, which he spotted when I picked one up, poured it on Daisy. It then got into her eyes, and she screamed and began rubbing her eyes. Daisy eventually rubbed it off her eyes, and was able to see again. This time, he charged her with a knife to skin to him. Albert then remembered the lighter that Rudy always carried, which was last used for smoking the drugs that his friend gave him. Albert ran for Rudy's body and searched his pocket, and was relieved to find a lighter still in his pocket. Albert then turned around and lit the lighter. Daisy stopped and looked at Albert and Ham before she could run away. Albert said, Hey, hey, hey! It's time to play! Albert tossed the lighter at Daisy and she was ignited. She ran around the room screaming as she burned. She eventually fell to the ground with the gasoline cans, causing a large explosion of fire. The fire grew and began to engulf the building. Eventually, it covered the almost entire warehouse, and the boys saw the light from the fire inside and the smoke coming from the door. They had tried to get it open by kicking and ramming it, but it nothing worked. Eventually, the place was burned down with Albert in it. The police and fire department arrived and found Albert half dead and buried in a large amounts of rubble. They managed to pull him out and put him on a stretcher, and rolled him off into the ambulance. 
Albert then looked up and saw the charred body holding a knife that Daisy tried to use to kill him. He assumed it was Daisy. He also saw that Russell was back with the rest of the gang. Albert put his hand and head back down and rested, knowing he they had found Russell and ended Daisy. They then loaded Albert into the ambulance and drove off. The episode ended in a cut to static and the shot of Daisy wearing Rudy's face. This went on for a whole minute and I felt like Daisy was staring at me through the screen. The episode then cut to black. I didn't know what to think. I was feeling so many different things at the moment. Fear from what I just saw, anger at the person who sent this to me thinking it'd be a funny joke, to relief that Albert had made it out alive. Despite all those feelings, I knew one thing for sure. I had to destroy the VHS. I took it and smashed it into bits with a hammer, along with the entire Fear Complete DVD collection. I then buried them, burned them for a safe measure. Is this the only copy? I'm not sure, but take this as a warning to whoever's reading this. If you receive the VHS copy of Fat Albert titled Fat Albert Smiling, then immediately destroy it.